This is Lori King, and you're listening to the Airborne Mind Show. Welcome to the Airborne Mind Show. I am your host, Ms. Bahawk, and in these conversations, I like to explore what mental frameworks drive people to do what they do. I have strong feelings about talking to people who are deeply entrenched in and passionate about their work. I've always been drawn to ideas, art, and people that have a perspective that I can learn from. And so along the way, we're gonna share and explore ideas that leave you with more context. You'll pick up things that might be educational, empowering, inspirational, or simply entertaining. And because you're listening, I have a free gift only for podcast listeners that you can grab if you head over to MizHQ.com. Again, that's M-I-Z-H-Q.com. Today's episode is brought to you by RevivRx. RevivRx is my recovery of choice. And this is because it is 100% clean, there's no BS, and it tastes absolutely phenomenal. My favorite is the Strawberry Recover, what I also call the Pimp Juice. I take four scoops after my workouts, and occasionally I'll do the Rebuild, which is a pure you know, protein versus the recover, which is a two to one carb to protein ratio. And uh, if you want some educational material around supplementation and just uh, nutrition overall, I recorded some short videos with Marcus Philly that you can get exclusively at theairbornemind.com. So check that out. And if you're in the market for supplements, head over to revivrx.com and use the code MIS10 at checkout. Today, my guest is Lori King. This is such a highly anticipated episode for me because I followed Lori's work for um, quite some time and to see her um, having dialogue and providing and sharing content around things that I feel uh, like need more attention um, or just need more conversation, um, it's so refreshing to see some of that, uh, on her Instagram profile, on her website. And it just affirmed for me, um, why I love having these conversations after this episode, I was like, this is, this was amazing. I mean, full transparency. I am learning every second of this episode along with you guys. And so being able to, um, explore ideas openly, um, and really kind of, uh, figure things out and come to conclusions and connect ideas and spark curiosity through this platform is, is so, um, I'm so grateful for it and I'm grateful for you guys for tuning in and listening. And so Lori personally, she has been on thyroid medications for over 10 years. And it wasn't until she got off the pill, addressed underlying hormone imbalances, and changed to a less intensive uh, exercise modality, that she's basically able to become medication free. Uh, She's worked with dozens and dozens and dozens of people uh, through nutrition coaching, and through tons of research and years of, you know, education, she has learned a lot, and she's sharing a lot around how to eat in a way that supports gut health, thyroid health, mental health, happy adrenals, and a balanced sex hormone profile. So we dig into a lot of those areas today. We talk about female sex hormones and some uh, common questions that you know we've gotten from listeners. Um, she just overall just drops a ton of knowledge in this one. So I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. And more importantly, hope you do something with it. Lori, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so, so excited to be here today, Ms. Buff. Uh, I am really excited because I've been following along with all the things that uh, you've been talking about on your Instagram and you've been pulling out, you know, putting out some killer content around just topics that I feel like need more dialogue around. Uh, So I'm excited to kind of dig into some of that. But just tell me tell me a little bit about yourself, your background and kind of how you got into nutrition coaching to start. Yeah, totally. So um, I was actually a competitive gymnast my whole life. And so um, at 17 years old, I was diagnosed as hypothyroid, um, which if you're not familiar, basically your thyroid is the master gland in your body. So think 
it controls everything from your metabolism um, to your sleep to your digestion. Like it literally does everything. And so, um, I, you know, I was active my whole life. And then here I strolled into high school um, and started having issues with my weight. And so things weren't really adding up. You know, it was like I was playing all these sports. You know, I would go to the gym. Um, like I said, just crazy active. You know, didn't eat terrible either. You know, was pretty had a pretty good head on my shoulders. And so um, here I was in high school, you know, kind of felt like my life was filing out of control. Um, and so as things progressed, it, it got to a point where it was like, hey, I'm, you know, like, I'm so exhausted that I was sleeping, you know, 15, 16, 17 hours a day and, like, physically missing school. Um, and so, obviously, you know, a couple weeks go by and my parents are like, whoa, 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 like, we should probably go get a professional opinion because, like, this isn't normal and, you know, whatever. And mm-hmm. so, um, sure enough, you know, had lab work drawn, was diagnosed as hypothyroid. And so, started medication. Um, but the thing is, if you have an underactive thyroid, um, you don't really have a whole lot of control over your body composition, your body weight. And so, like I said, you know, I here I was gaining weight. And so I kind of started to develop a little bit of an eating disorder because it's like, what do you do when you, <laughs> you're already exercising a ton, so maybe I'll just stop eating food and, like, maybe that'll fix it, right? Um, and so right towards the tail end of high school, it was like, okay, like, doctors still not helping me out, the medication thing was helping to a degree, but not really getting, you know, getting things where I wanted to be. And so it was like, oh, well, like, why don't I go to school for food and nutrition? Like, clearly, there's got to be something more to this. And so um, basically, I decided to pursue a degree in food nutrition to, you know, because I wanted to help others never be in my position, right? And so I got into school for dietetics. And then (laughs) things got a little weird, because everything you learn in dietetics and nutrition school super outdated. So think like my food pyramid um, and, you know, kind of these <laughs> low protein, low fat, high carb diets. Like I, I'll be honest, I think present day, if you went to school for it, that's probably still what you're seeing. Um, and so I kind of bounced around, you know, I ended up getting my degree and just said, like, fine, we'll figure it out. And so I found CrossFit in college, um, did the full-time CrossFit coaching thing for quite a few years, um, traveled with gymnastics seminar staff as well. And so um, kind of made full circle, you know, finally got back into nutrition coaching. Um, so present day, you know, I run my own company, um, basically do nutrition coaching and just kind of on this adventure to help people, you know, be more equipped to crush life, you know, more educated um, in, in that regard. And so it's been really cool because um, not only have I kind of remedied my own issues with eating, but I've been able to kind of pay it forward to other people and help get to the root cause of, you know, hey, we're having issues with digestion, we're having issues with hormones, we're having issues with things bigger than, you know, just the food and maybe some of the lifestyle stuff. And so it's, it's been really, really cool. Yeah, I was listening to the episode that you did with Shrugged and something that stood out to me was when you said, um, you know, the best coaching comes from what you have already experienced, you know, and that's kind of over time as you get into it more and more, you start to find a group of people or a niche that you really kind of enjoy working with. And for you, uh, it seems like it's people who are coming from a very dark place. It's like they've tried it all. You know, they feel like they're eating well, they're they're exercising exercising, they're doing all the right things, but like nothing seems to be working. Uh, could you tell me a little more about that and like who you kind of yeah, get to see and work with? 100%. Um, I always tell people like, if you come to me and it's like, Hey, I want better abs. Like I am not the coach for you. Um, I really, you know, I really truly believe that nobody hires a nutrition coach when they feel good. Right. So like if you're willing to pay the barrier entry of like, hi, I will spend, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars on nutrition coaching. Like Clearly, that barrier of entry, like, we have surpassed a lot of things and you're not in a good space because that's a lot of money. Um, And so um, exactly like you said, the best coaching is going to come from a place of experience. And so uh, even this morning, you know, I was kind of going through some emails and it was like, hey, I'm a power lifter. You know, I need to make weight, blah, blah, blah. And so um, first thing I did was said, hey, you know, thanks so much for reaching out. But like, unfortunately, I'm going to refer you out to my awesome friend, Alex Macklin, who specializes in you know, Olympic weightlifting and powerlifting because that's what he does and you know, that's his craft. Um, my craft is very much so, you know, if you are in a place of having, you know, digestive woes or having um, any sort of hormone issues, thyroid issues, like that's my peanut butter and jelly. And so especially I like complicated cases, like I'm a total science nerd. So um, I like somebody that forces me to get out of that comfort zone and go research, you know, hit the books 
go, you know, really expand on my options and, you know, reach out to other coaches, like get opinions um, like that, <laughs> you know, it's kind of that hill and the hill and, uh, you know, that, that chasing and that hunting of figuring out, you know, okay, what is the problem? How do we solve this puzzle? Like that is the exciting stuff to me for sure as a coach. Yeah. And, and I mean, on that note, I feel like, uh, it's such a, um, whenever we hear about like hormonal health or you just hear that word, the first thing that for me at least comes to mind is like, oh, testosterone levels, you know, and it's something that has some dialogue around. I've also had a couple clients who are dealing with, you know, low testosterone levels and are kind of, you know, they're working with like functional medicine doctors and things like that. But I've always wondered about, uh, you know, female hormones, right? And how just from scratch, like how does it work? How does it interact with, you know, like the food that you're eating? How does it kind of correlate to all the, all the things that we kind of want out of fitness and health? And so I know there's a lot there, but let's start with kind of just, uh, give me the lowdown on, you know, some things that we should know, starting with just when we start to think about the concept of female hormones. Sure. So I think it's worth noting that like women's health is so taboo. And like, if you want a perfect example of this, um, if you look at the women's space and you go on Instagram and, you know, say you search, you know, women's health or, you know, periods or whatever, you know, hashtag you decide to search. And so you end up in this very weird sector of the internet where um, it's very uncomfortable. And so like, literally, you know, I've seen images where it'll be like bloody panties and, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, wait, 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 like, can we talk about women's health in a way that's not weird or awkward? Because, like, no wonder nobody knows about it if that's where we have to go to learn about it. And so I think that's why, you know, social media-wise, like, people have been so receptive because it's like, oh, my God, I literally texted my best friend yesterday, and it was like, let it be known that, you know, in the middle of June, we finally talked about orgasms and, you know, you know like, boners and stuff on the internet. And I was really excited because, again, you're like, it's almost like I, I get a little nervous when I post stuff like, uh, you know, about that. And so same thing, like I had put out um, some information about like morning after pills or, you know, plan B and same thing like before I'm you know, hitting send on Instagram, like, God, I hope people don't turn this into a big debate or like, cause it was, you know, I try to keep things very factual. I try to keep opinions out of it, but it's simply just, you know, here's the facts. Here's what you need to know here's how to apply it, or here's things to go further research, right? Because the thing is, like, we live in a society that wants a pill for everything. They want that magic answer. And it's like, well, the, the best start to all of this is always going to be the education side. So, like, go learn about it before you ever start taking steps to, you know, change anything, especially in the hormone health side of stuff, right? Like, we, we could, you know, severely mess things up. And so, um, that's where I would say, you know, for most people, start with the education side. Um, two really, really great resources is the Period Repair Manual by Laura Bryden. Um, the Hormone Cure by Sarah Gottfried is also really great as well. Um, another big influencer in the space is Dr. Jolene Brighton. And um, I just heard rumor that, you know, she's publishing the manuscripts for her book. So, you know, things are starting to roll there. Um, but I mean, $15 off Amazon Prime and like you can start to understand the things that nobody taught you, right? Because even if we look at our school system, um, nobody teaches us, you know, hey, by the way, there's four parts to your menstrual cycle or, oh, hey, aside from just, you know, you're going to bleed every single month, like here's the important stuff you need to know or here's what you need to pay attention to. And so, um, you know, with these books, or again, Instagram is a great platform where more and more people are starting to speak about, you know, experience with hormonal birth control or natural ways to plan a family or, you know, prevent pregnancy and all this stuff. And so it's like, it has to start from a place of education because society's done us a disservice. Like, even if we talk about food and nutrition in general, like, let's talk about topics that have gotten kicked to the curb because we go to school and we don't learn the basics. Like, we don't even learn how to, you know, <laughs> save money for retirement or, you know, how to, how to do taxes, which is totally a you know, completely different subject. But very similar, like, ironically, every single day we eat multiple times a day, we sit behind, an, you know, an educational system and behind a desk for 12, 18, however many years, and nobody ever talks to us and says, hey, this is how you feed your body. These are the foods that are going to nourish you, you know, are going to keep you healthy. 
So especially we're not going into the topics of, oh, this is how to care for your hormones. Hey, this is how, you know, how to take care of yourself. And so it's just a very twisted system. And I don't know how we fight that other than, you know, it has to come from people, you know, like me, like Jolene Brighton, um, like all these influencers out there that are coming out and saying, hey, guys, you know, these are the four parts of your menstrual cycle. By the way, you know, this is what you have to pay attention to. If you see X, Y, Z symptom, go talk to a doctor, get lab work done. You know, we have to fix that cycle. And I think it's going to be one that's very, very slow to change because people just don't care, right? Like that's so, you know, if somebody's eating fast food, if somebody isn't working out, we can't also, you know, swerve in and say, hey, you know, care about your hormone health because, we have to go worry about the low bearing fruits of like, hey, can you be eating you know, real whole foods? Are you getting enough fiber? Are you drinking enough water? Are you going to bed at night? Um, so it's just this very weird barrier to entry. And so like that's at least where I'm thankful for the CrossFit space because I feel like um, you know, people just tend to be a little more in tune. People are, you know, it's not uncommon in a CrossFit gym to say, Hey, um, so I've been following macros and somebody would be like, Oh, me too. You know, so like at least with that population, I feel like you can start having those, you know, the sexy conversations a little bit sooner, but reversely, you know, if you're dealing with clients coming in that, like I said, you know, Hey, I don't go to the gym or, Hey, like I, I really love, you know, Netflix and chill and you know, <laughs> drinking beer. Um, it's really hard to, to veer that very important way because what people don't realize is like, if your hormones aren't in a good place, that will prevent you from having the body composition you want. That will prevent you from building muscle or seeing, you know, the strength gains or the fat loss or whatever it is that, you know, you as a person are craving. If your hormones are jacked up, like that is the fastest and biggest barrier of entry we could possibly insert into the system. And so again, you know, people think it's normal to have um, super miserable, you know, menstrual cycles, to have super bad PMS. Um, you know, on the guy side, like people don't realize, like, hey, you should be waking up with a boner every morning. You know, you should want to have sex with your wife. Um, oh, hey, you know, you don't seem as motivated, or you've lost that second gear in the gym, like. All of those, if people were educated and if people paid attention, those would be, you know, on the coaching end, the big shiny, you know, objects of like, whoa, like we need to slam the brakes and like pay attention here. Um, but people, again, it, it's lack of education. And then it's, you know, people can't fix something they don't know is a problem. Yeah. And and, and I think uh, what you mentioned how like, one, some people just don't care enough to go out and you know read the book or do the research or go google it it's like you're scrolling through instagram or you're listening to podcasts and if if it shows up there that's something that you're probably going to pay attention to so i think uh what when i saw some of the things that you were posting i was like okay yeah this is so valuable and it's so different and it's something that hasn't come up on my feed before you know and and it just gave me an exposure to kind of uh understanding and learning more from a different perspective so I love that you're doing that and then I also wonder like how how do people or how, how do uh, I mean we can go with both okay. men and women how do you get into a place where uh, there are some irregularities or you're you know there's hormonal imbalances like how does that process even kind of begin uh, based on what oh, you've man. seen <laughs> so and this is like where do you even start? Because like, I always cringe because, you know, at every single post I make or every blog post I write, you know, I'm trying to, again, like we can add value and give information all day long, but you have to be able to take it. You have to be able to apply it. And so like, I always cringe because, you know, if it is a post specifically about um, a hormone imbalance, you know, we're, we might see, you know, 15, 20. And like, honestly, you could probably write, you know, thousands of characters because it, we don't live in a vacuum, right? There's so many things that, you know, play into it. And it could be something as early as, you know, if we dial it back to childbirth, well, you know, did you have a vaginal birth? Did you have a C-section? Um, you know, were you breastfed? Were you not breastfed? Um, what things and foods were you exposed to, you know, early on in your life? Um, you know, as a child, how did your parents eat? You know, was it, hey, here's your McDonald's, your chicken nuggets, you know, your fried foods, or like, like God bless you, know, like my, my sister-in-law is totally on my page where it's like, here's my hipster granola, you know, organic food. And here's my, you know, handmade, you know, you, you might as well have a farm, you know, because it's, right. it's all just very high, you know, high quality foods and very, um, 
you know, she's on top of it. She's also the one that introduced me to CrossFit and, you know, all that stuff back in the day. Um, but, you know, it's all these things early on as a child, but then present day, you know, it's, it's almost like we have the snowball and the snowball just keeps rolling, right? So it's like, if we look at somebody in high school, well, did you play sports? How did you eat? Were you under eating? Reversely, you know, were you playing football? And so your goal was to be, you know, a giant brick wall. So you ate everything in sight. That was super processed, you know, high calorie. Um, you know, you roll into college and I think a lot of people go like, oh, that college 15 or 20 or, you know, 30. And it's like, well, like, people don't realize, like, oh, by the way, you know, like, so many items and so many foods are, are very toxic to us, whether or not we want to admit it, right? So, like, lots of people love, you know, alcohol or, or their, their glass of wine. And it's like, well, alcohol actually, like, increases estrogen levels. So, like, you got to, you know, that's not to say, like, run and hide from alcohol, but, like, if you don't know that, like, if you've ever seen that person that, you know, maybe, you know, with clothes on, it's like, oh, they look really great. And then, you know, they, they peel off their shirt in the gym and you're like, wow, like, you, you're a guy and you look like you're, you know, three or four months pregnant. And like, why are you holding all this weight in your midsection? Um, that's a combination of, like, cortisol, stress, alcohol. Like, we have the most estrogen receptors on their stomach. Um, and so that's kind of where that little, you know, we'll say a literal beer belly comes from. Um, but same thing, you know, people don't realize that um, there are so many, they're called xenoestrogens, um, but they're basically substances or chemicals that mimic estrogen-like properties in the body. Um, so if you're not careful, you know, maybe, you know, let's say you're going to the drugstore, you go to the grocery store and you're picking up, you know, your foundation, your shampoo, your body wash. Well, are you buying, you know, natural ones with minimal ingredients? You know, are you checking on resources like Think Dirty or EWG where they literally, you know, they go in and they grade products like A to F, like, hey, this is toxic AF or like, hey, you know, this is, you know, super hipster country granola and probably, you know, isn't going to impact your body you know, in a super negative way. And so um, I always tell people, you know, our body operates very much on a bucket system. So if you want to think, you know, you've got this little bucket. Um, if you are coming into contact with very toxic, you know, again, the, the skin care, body care, shampoo and condi um, conditioners, um, if you're using, you know, really nasty hand soaps, you know, household cleaners, laundry wash, um, we, we haven't even touched the food. We haven't touched the rest of our environment, right? So, like, we keep going. It's like, okay, well, like, quality-wise on the food, are you buying, you know, grass-fed meats? Are you buying, you know, super happy and healthy animals that are eating real foods? Or, like, I had made a joke on Instagram lately. Uh, you know, there was a headline years ago where it was, like, this semi-truck um, tipped over on the highway, and it was full of red Skittles that were going to feed, you know, <laughs> conventional cows. Um, but like, literally, you know, like, congratulations, your two-buck truck might be some Skittle cow after. <laughs> well, like, how does that treat us in comparison to a cow that's, you know, rolling around in some grass and sunshine and, you know, getting, getting activity, you know, like they're two totally different things. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, are you buying the high quality meats? Are you buying organic produce as much as possible? Are you avoiding processed foods, things out of packages? Um, you know, if we start looking at the environment stuff, it's like, are you using um, plastic as a huge source of, you know, estrogen? So like, you know, sorry, shaker bottle, like, please don't burn my apartment down. But like, shaker bottles need to go like switch to glass switch to metal um get, the, you know, get them out of your house or um you know especially unfortunately like people start being healthy so we start meal prepping our food doing tupperware and then here people are um you know using plastic tupperware and putting their really healthy food in plastic um so it's just all these things where it's like okay you know we we have a very toxic environment, and if you don't know any better, um, that can set you up for all these hormone issues. And, like, that doesn't get into the lifestyle stuff of, like, hey, well, if you're only sleeping five hours at night, go figure that your body is going to get real run down when you love going to, you know, sing class, orange theory, crossfit, you know, whatever exercise you're murdering. Like, we have to go to bed at night. Like, we can't be drowning ourselves in coffee all day long to survive. Um, you know, so there's so many lifestyle components too, where it's just like, we are unintentionally set up for such a shit, you know, shit storm that like, we don't even realize it. 
Yeah, I mean, kind of what you just mentioned is like everything's connected, right? And all of these different pieces like correlate with each other and it's hard to give just like one one blanket answer of like, oh yeah, it's coming because of X or Y. Uh, it, it could be happening from a combination of all these different things. And what this makes me think about is, uh, and this has been kind of on top of mind lately, but like when you think about high intensity you know, styled exercise, think like just functional fitness and group classes that, you know, is, is really common. And we've both kind of probably been a part of that in some way. And you think about the recovery that has to go into that, especially with kind of the norm of what you're seeing in designs, you know, these days, day to day, it's like, oh, you're kind of tr- like, even though you're doing this recreationally, you're kind of training like a competitor, you know, and you might not be recovering like one and your lifestyle might not be aligned with the activity that you're trying to do. And part of me thinks about like, okay, well, what about the person who's like five years into doing this, they still don't look any different. And maybe that was kind of their original goal, right? Or they feel like crap or they feel like progress is stalled. Um, is there is there something that stands out to you there is like okay they're eating right they're they're you know going to the gym all the time they're doing this you know high high intensity fitness uh where is there a component of hormonal health that kind of ties into this oh man 150 percent um so let's just put the cards on the table crossfit is a performance sport Mm -hmm. yes it may get You know, for a lot of people, I think that um, people get into CrossFit because it's got that competitive vibe, right? Like you're you're chasing down that person in the room. You're you're escaping for that leaderboard spot, um, whatever it is. In addition to, it's a very efficient way to um, get in activity, be active. You know, lift weights, potentially find the body you want. And so I think there's a big conception because people don't understand that. CrossFit may or may not get you the body composition that you want, right? So um, if we want to talk, you know, just very basics, like nobody got shredded doing muscle snatches and high pulls, you know, the bodybuilding space wins and nobody's doing CrossFit to go walk on the stage and win Mr. Olympia, right? Like bodybuilding is all about isolating, contracting. It's about that mind-muscle connection. Maybe you get it with CrossFit. And like, I'll be honest, I think that your people that tend to be high performance athletes, they're engaging the correct muscles, they're moving in the correct way. And so I think they get a little bit more of the aesthetic gain. Um, But if you look at your standard person that maybe, you know, they sit in a desk all day, so they have really shitty mobility. Well, no, you know, if they're doing a technical movement like a snatch or um, squatting, you know, are they even squatting parallel, you know, they might not be getting the full benefit from the aesthetic side on on how all that's going and so um with many people that have come to us for nutrition coaching that's the biggest request i'm actually making and you know the conversations i'm having is hey um if we're working out six days a week or i actually just had a client yesterday where um you know brief summer it was like yeah you know i run three to four times a week um logging anywhere you know six to eight miles and then i'm also going to crossfit for two to three hours at a time and you're like wait 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 like do you feel like dog shit i mean clearly you do because you just hired me (laughs) but like how how are you surviving because that sounds horrific like i used to do that shit back in the day right like when you get into crossfit everybody's like man i'm just gonna hammer myself into the floor like this is fun and then like eventually your body's like yo, like, we can't hang with this, so, like, please stop, right? Right. Um, But I've actually been working very, very closely with Brian Gorstein out of San Diego Athletics, and so um, same thing, basically producing something almost very similar to Marcus Philly's functional bodybuilding, where it's like, hey, you know, we don't have to get out of the CrossFit gym, but we can do things in a way that are smarter and more intelligent for a body and that still feel like CrossFit, right? Because CrossFit is fun. Like you're, you're in a group setting, you're with people, you know, it's fun. But, you know, can we do that in a little more eloquent and intelligent way that also doesn't just smash our hormones, you know, into the floor? And so I think that's a very common memo when you talk to people is again, you know, the first, you know, one, two, three years of CrossFit, like, 
like I miss that, right? Like I miss just coming into the gym and just, you know, crushing myself and like still walking out feeling like a million bucks. But like I said, you know, after a while, it's kind of like the body's like, yo, I'm sick of your shit. Like <laughs> politely, no, you know, right. we're going to start shutting some stuff down. Um, and so you do, you have people that, um, and I'm a perfect example of this. I had shoulder surgery um, actually earlier this year, back in August. And so we had a goal on the table. It was, hey, I want to get back to regionals. I want to be back on that floor. And so I was gunning, you know, the training to levels that, you know, again, I knew I was pushing it, but it was also like, well, like, this is my last shot. Like, let's just blow it out of the water. And so what quickly happened was, you know, a few months after surgery, I was getting back in the gym and I just gunned it too hard. And, you know, I was eating tons of food. I was doing all the supplementation. Like, like that's what I do for a living. So I've got that down pat. But the recovery side didn't match. And so even though I was sleeping, you know, eight to 10 hours a night, I was eating all the food, doing all the things, I wasn't physically recovering and I didn't have enough rest days. And so what did my body do? It gave me the giant middle finger. And so, um, you know, if I was, you know, squatting under a barbell, if I was middle of the workout, it'd be like, Oh dear. I, mm, I feel like I could black out right now. Um, and so like the first time that happened, you were like, Whoa, shit, you know, you take a couple days off. And then it was like that, like it was game over. Um, you know, it, it happened that first time. And then you know, I, I literally took like a week off the gym. Um, and then, you know, tried to step back in the gym again after you know, copious amounts of rest days. And like, it was just game over. Um, and I, I should have on my end known better. I had competed at regionals before. I had done the same exact thing. Um, and so that was, you know, years and years ago. But I, I like to think, too, that, again, when your body understands that shitty place, it doesn't ever want to go back there. Um, so coming, you know, doing the things that I did, um, that's, you know, that system response was also probably a little shorter than for other people. But I think that regardless, you know, people, that that's not an uncommon thing, right? You lose that second gear where it's like, hey, you know, maybe it's a 10 minute, you know, workout. And so at minute eight, you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, you know, like, let's go. To right. one. And then it's like, oh, I, I don't I, I can't put, you know, the pedal to the floor like there's nothing there. Or like I said, for a lot of people, it's that that sensation of I shouldn't be here right now or I, I shouldn't be. But I should go. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, I, I think, again, you know, it's that man, I just wanted to quit in the middle of a workout, or maybe you did quit in the middle of a workout, you know? And so um, when you hit that place, like, you have to pay attention. And so even recently, you know, I, I posted a picture that got a lot of attention because for the past year, um, you know, I've, I've tried to really just forgive my body for, for being a dumbass, right? And so it's like, I, you know, I haven't been allowed to be at a caloric deficit. You know, I, I work with actually a couple of nutrition coaches because, we all use each other as resources, but then, you know, they also help me with my nutrition stuff. And so it was like being in a caloric deficit the past year has not been an option. Like I, I couldn't, <laughs> my body needed, you know, the, the recovery, my body needed those calories. Like I didn't get to give a shit about what I looked like. It, it, it was just one of those things. And so same thing, um, exercise wise, um, I hired one of the best in the industry, which is Brian. And so it's, it's been a very fun learning curve because it's like, man, if somebody that's so, intelligent about all of this already can put myself in the shit bucket and put myself in that place of being so busted and broken I guarantee all the, you know, all the other people in this community are doing it and we see them as clients all the time and so our goal has been you know we had to test drive stuff because you know Brian would program stuff and it would be like uh, rowing intervals, or biking intervals, and like they wouldn't even be, <laughs> they wouldn't be fast, they wouldn't be, you know, there'd be ample recovery time. It, it might literally be like, hey, you know, go, go like 50 RPMs on the bike for 30 seconds on, you know, two minutes right. off. And, you know, by the round three, it'd be like, Brian, like, I, I gotta shut this down because I'm back in this land of like, I should not be doing this, like, I gotta go, right? And so, same thing on the programming side, it's like, we, we played around a little bit in all the worlds where it was like, okay, how, how do we, how do we best set ourselves up for success? Because for a lot of people, CrossFit works because again, like you like the go, 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 you know, competitive driver, like the Mickey Bobby, like, I just want to go fast. Um, 
I still, I'll be super transparent. Like I did a workout the other day. Like my health isn't shitty anymore, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it was like, man, I haven't emptied the tank in over, you know, a year's time. And so it was like, it was, uh, it was a very frail style workout and, you know, being gymnastic background, like pull-ups and stuff are my jam. So, um, it was something, you know, it was like, 15, 12, 9, like pull-ups, thrusters, and puppies over the bar. And so in my head, it was like, oh, I'm going to go unbroken on all of this. Like, I want it to hurt so bad. I'm just going to go. And like, for the, you know, halfway through, like I was doing it. I was crushing it. Um, I think I finished the workout and I looked at the board and it was like three minutes faster than anybody, you know, all day long. Um, and like, I think I spent the drive home, like on the verge of like wanting to puke a little. Right. And it was like, okay, like some tendencies just don't die, unfortunately. Right. Like, and, and I know better, but like that day I just wanted to empty the tank. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but, that is very hard because again, CrossFit attracts the people that were former collegiate athletes or love the high performance, love the competition. And so it's hard to have somebody where it's like, Hey, you love this exercise modality, but you and your hormones, like it doesn't love you back. You know, Hey, I need you to go in the corner and you can, uh, you can bicep curl, right? Like that reality is like a client's worst nightmare. Like you're taking away the one thing they love, but again, you know, there has to be education on the forefront where it's like, hey, guys, you know, when you go to the gym, your gym doesn't necessarily have your agenda, right? Like they're programming for the masses. It's a it, to a degree, it's a templated approach, right? Because it's not tailored to you. It's not tailored to your goals. And so, um you know, maybe maybe the the workout on the board can't comprehend of oh hey you're a CEO with a high stress job with you know forty CEO employees you have three kids at home um, and you have a second you know side hustle like dang you're coming to the gym five days a week but stress equals stress so like maybe you should only be working out like two days a week and it would actually elicit that same exact response for somebody that's you know a chill stay at home mom and, you know, doesn't, you know, doesn't have all that stress and the extra you know, anxiety going right. on. Or um, maybe, you know, that person that, you know, they're, they're just, you know, in college right now, crushing life. Um, people have to be very careful and we learn how to, like, we lose that ability to kind of pay attention, right? Because on the board, if somebody says, Hey, RX weight equals, you know, 95, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not you can do it. You're like, well, I, I, excuse my ego. I'm going to do 95 pounds. Um, Murph is a perfect example of this. And I actually got a little irritated this year round because I was paying attention. But you had all of these people that are rocking, you know, weight vests. And then you see them doing push-ups on their knees or they're doing pull-ups on the rig and they're not getting the chin over the bar. Right. And it's like, I appreciate the pride aspect of you want to go RX, but clearly you need to go body weight so you can do good push-ups and actually you know, hit range of motion right. on pull-ups, right? Um, but it's just, it's a very interesting dynamic because, um, you know, like I think out of Deuce Gym, they have the hashtag, you know, hold the standard. Um, I think that a lot of places, that's not necessarily the case. You know, I've, I've walked into gyms where, um, there wasn't even a coach leading, you know, the class workout. Mm -hmm. Or I've seen, you know, you know, a lot of people are just, you know, maybe maybe they're lifting in, you know, a global gym or stuff like that. And so there's just a very weird dynamic with all that because it's like I think that CrossFit has done so many great things, but I think there's also some things that have kind of gotten lost in translation that people don't connect. Like, hey, um, we love that you're here six days a week too, but like you need to go out of the gym. Like, can you just net, you know, 10,000 steps a day and like not be a couch potato? Um, but same thing, like people, more and more I see, people have this fear of rest days. I'm like, even I've been, I've been waiting to make a post about like, can we put the stop to like active recovery days, right? Where people be like, whoa, it's rest day. Um, went on a hike, you know, tumbled with a dragon. And uh, oh yeah, I did four hour intervals, you know, on the on the rower. And it's like, motherfucker, like that's, <laughs> this is not active recovery. Right. Active recovery would be like, I think it's like MAC 10 with, with OPEX, right? Where yeah. it's like, you're, you're just cruising. Like we, <laughs> we ain't breathing heavy. You're having a conversation like, I'll be honest, like, I'm the first person, like, I'm going to call you out on your shit as a coach. So, like, again, my person I referenced earlier, like, that was literally like, hey, 
we're not even going to do anything with your nutrition. Like, first and foremost, like, you are exercising twice a day, you know, however many times a week. You can exercise five days a week, and you get one workout. Um, And I'll be honest, like, she's probably going to hate me, but we'll probably even pull it down to four because, again, stress equals stress. Um, If you told me, you know, seven or eight months ago, hey, Lori, like, you can work out four days a week and have the best body composition you've ever had over, you know, how you looked, you know, walking in at 12% body fat, you know, on regional floor or whatever, I'd be like, no fucking way. But, but here we are, like, I haven't, I haven't changed my, (laughs) my nutrition any of the past year. Like the only thing I've changed has literally been, Hey, I'm supplementing to support, you know, gut health and hormones. Hey, I've changed my exercise modalities to something that's more bodybuilding with, you know, a little bit of cardio or, you know, moving a little faster than normal on occasion. Um, people don't, people don't comprehend that. Mm -hmm. Um, it literally is, you know, like eat less and move more is like the opposite of what runs, runs true for the hormones. And so I wish more people could learn that. Um, and so again, it just comes back to like, how do you get the message out there other than you keep sharing your story? Um, you know, I, I'm super transparent because again, you know, the best coaches come, come from the place of, Hey, I've done that. I have fucked up. I've been there, you know? Right. I mean, I, what makes me I think about like, okay, you, you find yourself in this position uh, where you're doing everything that you think is right and still nothing is kind of working. And you did highlight some of the symptoms that you might feel if your hormones are a little bit kind of out of whack. Um, how, does this also tie into like, uh, let's, let's go into like thyroid health and uh, mm-hmm. irregular periods and things like that. Um, is it, yeah, can you kind of go into the correlation of, I guess, you know some of the symptoms that you'll feel when you start to find yourself in this you know in this scenario totally so I think um a good one to start with would actually be lack of a period um so it's so fascinating right because um because there's this stigma and because society is clearly not in a good place like with our menstrual cycle it should be relatively painless um it should just be a thing you know hey it happens you know we'll say four or five days of the month there's no pain there's no pms there's no bloating weight gain um you know there's there's nothing crazy going on like it should just seamlessly happen and then seamlessly leave um and so with people if they lose their menstrual cycle it's it's almost like a pride thing present day of like yes i don't have to deal with that it's you know it's such a pain in the ass i'm glad to not have that um, and that is actually probably the most terrifying feedback you know, from your body more so than anything. Because again, if, if we remember that our menstrual cycle is literally a monthly feedback report from our body of like, hey, we're doing good or like, whoa, we ain't doing so hot. So if we're not getting that feedback report at all, whoa, like time to pump the brakes, right? And so um, the fascinating thing about it's called amenorrhea. Um, if we're not having a period, like your body is, is literally communicating, Hey, um, as a female, you are able to reproduce. Like you are on this earth, you can bear children. If you're not able to have a period, you are not able to do that. So therefore like, Holy shit, that man, like we, we, whatever we're doing, we need to stop. And so it's not uncommon for somebody um, you know, everybody wants abs, right? Like that's like the Instagram, like, oh, look, guys, I got abs. We're, we're super slow. We made it. Um, well, maybe if you get down to a super low body fat percentage, that disappears. Uh-oh. Um, and so there, there's so many things to that, right? Because um, if we want to talk about low fat diets, well, cholesterol is a precursor for hormone production. So if somebody's eating, you know, chronically 40 to 50 grams of fat oh see you later menstrual cycle um you know same thing with actually carbohydrates and and it makes me cringe and i hate to say the keyword the the k word on a podcast because keto is such a hot topic um your menstrual system like your organs they want carbohydrates and so um somebody in the space laura bryden actually threw out the idea of like hey we need bare minimum of like 150 grams of carbohydrates to ovulate, you know, to have a normal cycle. Um, and so people were losing their mind, um, especially from the keto you know, spectrum, because it was like, whoa, 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 uh, I've been doing keto for two months and, and I found my best body composition and I've lost all this weight and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, 
cool. Um, everything with hormones is always very, very far behind. So like, even you're know, like, let's say with thyroid meds, if your doctor puts you on thyroid meds, he doesn't say, Hey, I'll see you in a month. It's, Hey, I'll see you in three to four months. Um, same thing with our follicular cycle, like our follicles are developing, you know, three, four months behind. So like, if you have a shitty period present day, you actually need to go back, you know, two, three, four months and look at what your lifestyle was like. And so it's like, hey, oh, turns out you were doing a bodybuilding show. You were eating no food on poverty macro, you know, level 5,000. That's why, you know, here present day, you're seeing a shitty menstrual cycle, right? Um, and so same thing, like carbohydrates are very necessary. And so it's hard to give a pinpoint on exact numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Because you can't compare somebody that sits at a desk and, you know, is a couch potato versus, again, you know, the extremes of like, hi, I'm a high level CrossFit athlete who trains four to six hours a day. Like, I, I can't produce a, a study with that. So, like, you're never going to see studies for that. Right. That, that, like, welcome to Nutrition 101, right? People are like, whoa, I disagree. Let me see the case studies. And it's like, motherfucker, like, you're never, <laughs> you cannot produce studies yeah. on this, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but, like, I can tell you from an empirical standpoint, like, hey, I don't have a period. And, you know, maybe they're eating, like, something sad, like 60, 70 grams of carbs. Um, you know, let's say three months goes by, you've dialed them up to something 150, 200. Um, even, you know, the, the, on the reverse end, it's like, hey, I've got 200. I'm now eating 400 all of those people suddenly it's like, Oh, I got my period back. Well, guess what? Like you were overtraining, you were overstressing, your body needed those carbohydrates to properly function. Um, do you, wait, do you, so do you, they, um, do you find yourself like if, if that scenario you just mentioned right there is like, okay, I need, and that's just an example, right? It's like, Oh, 150 grams of carbohydrates to support, uh, you know, just, the menstrual cycle and just your overall health there is there is that going to support body composition too or might you have kind of like an opposite effect and and you know you might have to go through not prioritizing body composition and maybe there's a bit of weight gain but then that helps kind of repair the menstrual stuff and then maybe later on the body composition stuff can come back 100%. And like, that's such an important fact, right? Because people, people come to you and they'll be like, Hey, I haven't had a period in six, seven, eight years. Um, but I really want abs. And you're like, like, we need to fix health. (laughs) Like, We can't worry about the vanity goals right now. Like you, you are in a very broken place, whether or not you understand that. So like, Hey, let's get you to understand like why this has to be a priority. Um, but yeah, like that's, that's the hard part. And so the same thing goes, um, hormonal birth control use is a very, (laughs) a very sensitive subject for people because, um, you know, nobody wants to have babies. That's totally okay that, you know, we want to, we want to prevent that situation. And like, I'll say certainly like hats off to birth control, because I think that especially in college, you know, we have females that are, um, you know, hooking up with people that they shouldn't, or they're in situations where, you know, they're intoxicated or just not in a position to make the best decisions and probably not with people that they're going to be with, you know, on the long term. Um, so it's like birth control has done so many favors in that regard, but people don't understand how hormonal birth control, you know, affects them either. And so that's always a huge talking point with clients is like, Hey, you know, like, we're going to try to fix all the diet and the lifestyle. And, you know, we're going to try to give you, you know, we're going to try to get you feeling better and give you that body composition you want. But if we do all of those things and we still, you know, we're not seeing fat loss or we're not seeing that body composition change, like we've got to go down the pathway of hormonal birth control because by the way, like it's handed out like candy from the doctor's office, right? Like you don't even actually need a prescription in a lot of places. Like you can literally just Google like, hi, I need birth control, you know, and a company will, you know, link you and, you know, 30 bucks, you can, you know, a a pack of pills get sent to to your apartment. Right. Um, And so it's scary because people don't realize how it affects them. And so same thing if we talk about the dynamic of you know hormones are always you know behind on the learning curve side of things people have all these symptoms that creep in that they don't realize or don't connect because again you know maybe you have this IUD or you you know you've been taking the pill for six 12 months and and haven't you know nothing's you know on, on your end nothing's changed but you know at some point later in your life if you transitioned off it's like oh 
I, you know, I'm not carrying around all this excess weight or like, oh, if I go to a deficit, I can actually see fat loss or like, oh, I now can, you know, build some muscle. Um, nobody understands that there's so many layers to the hormonal birth control thing because um, it does, it, it, it increases inflammation, it depletes our gut health, it causes nutrient deficiencies. And that's just, you know, kind of tipping the iceberg, right? Like there's, there's so many more things, but it's like, okay, you know, if we go back to the thyroid stuff, right? Well, hormonal birth control inhibits thyroid function. So here you have, you know, all these females in the gym that, you know, okay, they, if they love their wine, they love brunch on the weekends, you know, maybe they eat okay, you know, Monday through Friday, and then, you know, the weekends, they're crushing tacos and donuts and mimosas. Um, but they're also taking hormonal birth control. Well, like, shoot, <laughs> you know, like hormonal birth control is kind of like, driving a car and, um, you know, let's say we have this car in our, um, front parking lot. Right. And so we just keep putting in gas, keep putting in gas. Um, our body is very bad at getting out excess estrogen because again, it's in our environment. A lot of people love drinking. And so our liver gets a little compromised and it can't kick out, you know, the, the excess, you know, hormones and balances it should. Um, maybe somebody's not great at consuming fiber and enough water. So same thing, you know, the liver and digestive system kind of work in tandem. And so it should be like the liver filters all the garbage, you know, the digestive system then kicks it out. Well, if something, you know, gets kinked up in the mix, then we start reabsorbing estrogen. We start having symptoms of estrogen dominance. So like, if you want to talk about, you know, like estrogen and progesterone are kind of like the seesaw in the body, they should, they should be, you know, nice and balanced. Well, you know, we might start having issues with heavy periods. We might start having issues with water retention, um, with pain in the breast. We might have migraines and headaches. Um, we might have weight gain and mood swings because, again, you know, we have the seesaw that we're slamming into the floor on one side. Hormonal birth control prevents us from ovulating in order to, you know, in order to produce progesterone, we have to ovulate. So there's just this big cycle that it's like on multiple different spectrums, you know, that this is so complicated, but we have this seesaw that gets slammed into the floor and it can't ever find that rebalance because we're constantly coming into contact with, you know, fake estrogen. We are inputting more fake hormones. Um, and, and frankly, you know, the, the issue with hormonal birth control anyway is that it doesn't act like our actual hormones in the body. They're completely different chemicals. And so um, the analogy I always use is uh, it would be like if you said, hey, significant other, like I would love you to pick up ice cream on the way home. And so they walk in with Froyo and you're like, well, um, Things. Like, it's not what I wanted, but I mean, it's kind of the same thing, so like, I guess we'll wing it, right? Yeah. Um, that's very much how the synthetic chemicals, whether um, we're doing, you know, testosterone replacement therapy, whether we are doing, um, you know, if we're trying to do some sort of hormonal replacement therapy, whether it's the pill, whether it's IUDs, um, it's just not the same. And so there's so many factors that kind of go into that bubble and then again, you take somebody's nutrition decisions, you take their lifestyle decisions. And so it just turns into this big, ugly pot of like, where do you even start? Because everything is so convoluted and messy, right? Yeah, uh, that's such a wealth of information. And I love uh, the track that we're going here. And uh, for the first time ever on the Airborne Mind Show, we're going to take a break because I need a pee break for a second. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, we're going to dig into some listener questions and kind of continue this conversation around how you can, like, now that we know this, how do you start to kind of take some action steps to maybe rehab yourself out of that and get back on the gain strain? Totally. Okay. Give me just one second. I'll be right no back.
I feel much better. <laughs> um, we're good. And we're back. Uh, so I want to uh, kind of piggybacking off of what we were just talking about with the menstrual cycle. There's a couple listener questions that I have. Um, and, and one of them is why... Okay, so we're talking about irregular periods. Why is it sometimes worse than others, and does what you eat affect it too? So, I mean, I think we're we're touching on that a little bit, but uh, do you have any initial thoughts just kind of thinking of that one? Yeah, so I mean, let's think about it, right? So if we dial back to that concept where um, we are always working hormonally in reverse, I think it's, again, just so important if we're having, you know, like, let's say this month, like I said, super horrific period, bad cramps, heavy bleeding, you know, whatever the symptoms are, um, that, that is your red flag to say, okay, let's dial back in time. You know, what was I doing three to four months ago? Was I, you know, really, really stressed out in life? Did I have a major, you know, was I changing jobs? Did I move houses? Um, you know, so searching for anything like that, um, just in your past history, that would kind of be a red flag for that. Um, you know, maybe again, if we look at, hey, present day, you're working with a nutrition coach, like, hurrah, good job. Well, what did your food look like, you know, three or four months ago? Because it's definitely like this rolling system, right? So when you start working with a coach, you're always looking at what are the low bearing fruits that we can manipulate with somebody um, to get the biggest ROI or the biggest return on investment, right? So maybe if somebody is eating out, you know, all meals all day long, hey, um, can we minimize that to, you know, one meal a day we're eating out? And can we cook from home and, you know, or could we use a ready-made meal system service? Um, you know, something like that, right? So, like, we're looking for those changes. And so as that ball gets rolling, um, again, that's where you start to be like, hey, you know, can we concentrate on fiber? Are we getting enough water? Are we sleeping more at night? Um, for some clients, it's holding them accountable where it's like, hey, what is the minimum commitment we can make to the gym? You're not going to the gym. Can we go three times a week? Right. You know, we start to get all mm -hmm. of these plays and complexities going on as we are working with somebody. Um, but again, all of those take time. And so I think it's important to look at, you know, hey, what am I doing now in the moment? And, you know, am I crushing it? But then also, what was I doing in the past? Um, I would say, again, what you're eating is 100%. Like, it has to do with everything, right? So, like, even before I want to throw sexy supplements or, um, you know, sexy, <laughs> just sexy things in general, like, we're always going to start with food and lifestyle. So is somebody sleeping, you know, eight to nine hours a night? Hey, um, you're a coffee addict. You're drinking, you know, 40 ounces of coffee a day. Like, how can we minimize that vastly, right? Or, hey, um, every single day you're drinking two to three glasses of wine. Um, can we get that down to, like, one day a week, right? Um, so you need to absolutely look at the nutrition stuff and the lifestyle stuff. Um, again, are we, are we examining what our training volume and intensity looks like? If we're doing CrossFit or Orange Theory five days a week, could we mix in, you know, hey, could two of those days be yoga or um, two of those days, could we just go on a long, you know, a long walk with the dog or, you know, a, a kind of like a low and slow jog? Um, you know, can we start to optimize our gut health um, via things like quality probiotics, fermented foods, bone broth, collagen? Um, can we supplement, you know, things like B complex, vitamin D, vitamin C, magnesium, zinc? Um, those are kind of the core staples of like, doesn't matter who you are, whether, you know, competitive athlete or mom of five, um, those things most people tend to be deficient in and they're going to feel better um, and, you know, see improvement in symptoms. Um, can we look at environmental stuff? And so can we reduce plastic exposure from stuff like Tupperware um, from our water bottles or meal prep containers? Um, can we clean up the environment via, um, you know, again, natural body products, skincare, deodorants, household cleaners? Um, on the food stuff, you know, can we make small changes where um, maybe, <laughs> I love this quote, um, so my buddy Vaughn um, has kind of coined the term of breaking fast and, you know, putting the bad ass back in breakfast. How many people do we know follow this kind of, whether intentional or unintentional, um, this model where it's like, yeah, I don't eat breakfast in the morning. Um, maybe at lunch I have a protein 
fucking bar. And then by 3 p.m., I inhale everything under the sun from donuts and pizza and, and tacos, <laughs> am I right? Um, so getting people to you know, not only eat at regular intervals and keep their blood sugar regulated, but doing a double check where it's like, hey, at every single meal, do we have a protein, a carbohydrate, a fat, a vegetable? Um, are we consuming plenty of cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels? Um, sprouts especially are actually really great too. So like if you can get in things like broccoli sprouts or clover sprouts, um, those are also great for hormone health. And all of those actually help naturally rebalance your hormones as well. Um, you know, again, on the fiber side, like digestion is just so important. So if, we're, if we need to balance our hormones, we need our digestive tract to stay. Um, I was recently reading um, Dr. Ruskio's Healthy Gut, Healthy You. And so he made a really great analogy. And so he was talking about um, if you have stagnant water, it tends to be very, very full of, you know, bad things and bacteria and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, you would want flowing water because it's just like, you know, mm. less likely to be contaminated very much in our body. Well, like, those are the clients that give me the worst anxiety, right? It's like, hi, um, I only go number two once every five days. Oh, that, like, that's terrifying, yeah. right? Because again, all of that stuff that, you know, your liver and, and your gut are these awesome little, you know, sponges that are supposed to, you know, clean, you know, kind of clean the junk out of her body and then push it out of her body. Well, if that's like, I don't want to say fermenting, but like if it's growing in there, right, right. Um, like you need to get it out on a regular basis. Um, so same thing, you know, uh, hey, how much water are you drinking? Um, I drink coffee. Oh, well, can we get like body weight divided by two in fluid ounces plus like, you know, 20 ounces of fluid for every hour we exercise? Um, and then, you know, again, like that's when you can kind of start getting into the fancier supplementation of stuff like DIM or calcium deglucurate that are going to you know, naturally balance hormone levels. But again, all of that was very much so like those were all lifestyle suggestions and diet suggestions. And that's 100 percent, you know, <laughs> recognizing you have a problem is absolutely the first step. So mm. if you're like, OK, I have horrific periods, um, that's not good. It's like, okay, well, again, start on the education side, you know, 15 bucks, pretty solid investment, you know, pick up a book like Period Repair Manual or The Hormone Cure, you know, learn more about it. But like, you need to kind of diagnose and look at like, okay, um, the book is saying do X, Y, and Z. I'm definitely not doing that, but I have the symptoms they mentioned. Okay, let's try implementing it, right? Or same thing, you know, like if you, if you just got too much going on in life and it's just not a thing. You need to hire an experienced coach and you need to find somebody um, that can kind of do all that hard work for you. But again, like I, I'm still always going to go back to the fact that, you know, humans are not robots. And so yeah. much like if somebody said, hi, um, just tell me what to eat. Bye. Well, like I can't write you a meal plan like that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't teach you lifestyle habits. That doesn't do things right. Um, very much on the hormone side, it's like. If somebody, you know, somebody may come to me and be a token, you know, ha have all these token symptoms, but it's like, okay, well, like, we have to teach you how to fix your lifestyle and how to do this for the long term, because I could throw all these sexy supplements at you. We could get that blood work better, but if you can't sustain it, what's the point, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's no different than, you know, somebody that buys a $99 template, they get shredded, and then, you know, you run into them six months later, it's like, hey, uh, so what happened? You know, if you can't sustain the lifestyle that you're building, like, why even bother? Why go mm -hmm. through that agony of the weight cut or, you know, whatever it is you did to get there? Like, ultimately, like, we have to get back to the premise of, like, People are not robots and people just need the education desperately. So like, A, can we educate them on why it's important, but then can we also teach them those lifestyle habits so that they never have to go back to that shitty place ever again? I love that. And, and, and I think, uh, I think what you just said is going to definitely tie into this next one. I, there, I think there's a lot of crossover, but this question was like, why do I get cramps while working out leading up to when my period starts like a week out? Mine gets so bad to the point of having to stop mid workout. Are there certain things you can eat during your period to help symptoms? Woo, man, that's loaded. So super loaded. Yeah. Super loaded question. Um, again, I will just go back to this theory, right? So like, let's paint a little bit of an understanding. So if we look at two different scales, right? 
On the far left side, we have super, we'll say super dramatic periods. So like we have that token person of, hey, I have really bad cramps, um, debilitating pain. Um, you know, I have the mood issues. I'm bleeding through multiple tampons or cups or whatever it is. You know, we are, we are in the land of shit and misery. Um, reversely, on the other token side, we have uh, my period comes for, you know, one or two days. It's super light. It's kind of like a ghost. It just comes and goes. Um, basically, what we're looking at is, you know, if something is super, super light and almost doesn't happen, we know that hormone levels are actually low. On the reverse side, if stuff is really shitty and heavy, um, that is estrogen basically wreaking havoc. Um, I've heard the analogy that estrogen, technically we'll, we'll use the term estradiol. Um, there's four different parts of it um, or four different kinds. But estradiol is kind of like this dominant dance partner that wants to walk all over you. And so, again, if your lifestyle and your exercise and everything can keep it in bay, it's great and good. And that is your person that, you know, if you talk to somebody and they're like, They've always had super clear skin. They don't have crazy weight fluctuations. Their periods aren't bad. Um, that that's actually you know surface level. They just have really good hormones and you know they're in a really good space. And so anytime somebody is sliding into that super miserable category, like that's an issue with um, with their estrogen. And so what I would say is that. Um, we have to be so careful with all this because we don't just want to go jabbing different bushes. Um, you know, we want to actually see what's going on. And so I think that's where blood work is always going to win. Um, you know, don't, <laughs> why, why spend all this money and time on supplements, you know, playing Dr. Google and, and you know, self-diagnosing yourself. Like you need to get physical data on the works. You need to be working with a doctor. You need to be working with you know, a coach or somebody that's well versed in all this because it is, it's overwhelming. And, you know, if you could, some stuff is very similar, right? So you could think that you're suffering from this, you start treating it and then, you know, it goes the other way. And so, um, you know, black work doesn't lie. It's expensive, but it tells you exactly what's going wrong. Um, the one I would mostly suggest is going to be your Dutch test. Um, mm. I've seen price tags of, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars, but it literally does all the hormones. It does all the metabolites. It tells you again, we don't want a serum estrogen. We don't want the combination of the four different types of estrogen in the body. We want to know exactly which one's fucking everything up because if we know, <laughs> you know, we can we can fix it, right? And so um, for that question, you know, I would say definitely we need to get some lab work on the table. We need to, you know, be in conjunction with the doctor because again, I think I rattled off, you know, 10 or 15 things of things that we could certainly improve, you know, and implement via nutrition and lifestyle. Um, but that's definitely, you know, it's great that she's observing that. Let's figure out, you know, specifically what's going wrong, because it sounds like a, an issue with the transition from basically our follicular phase, which is, you know, kind of the first one to two weeks. Um, when estrogen levels are rising, you know, in the middle of our cycle, we ovulate and then progesterone should um, start to rise as estrogen levels start to drop. It sounds like she's having an issue in that transition because, you know, halfway through her cycle, you know, a week before she's actually menstruating, she's starting to have chief complaints. And so there's definitely, again, you know, if we want to think of that seesaw maneuver, you know, we're a little off kilter. Um, another analogy I've heard that I thought was really eloquent was somebody said that, um, you know, if we have a grass lawn, that estrogen is kind of like the grass that comes in. And so um, ovulation and then, you know, that followed up by the progesterone, our progesterone should be the lawnmower that comes in and cuts the grass. And so maybe either we do a shitty job of cutting the grass or, you know, something is inhibiting that from happening. And so we suddenly have this lawn that's very overturned and overgrown and stuff like that. Um, there's definitely something going wrong, you know, in, in that balance that, that can be done better. And so, like I said, you know, save yourself the agony, like certainly, you know, pick up the education resources, you know, go learn more about it. But like before you start making any changes or, you know, supplementing these sexy things like DIM or Vitex or, you know, whatever it is, like, let's get with a doctor, let's get some lab work on the table, like, let's invest in yourself. And I know it sucks to be like, hi, um, I'm going to spend, you know, $400 on lab work. Like, clearly, this isn't a problem that's going to, going to go away. So do you want to spend your entire life having this issue? Or do you want to make, you know, a one or two time investment, get to the bottom of things, and then be that person that has the perfect skin? They don't have mood issues. They're not struggling with any of these symptoms. Um, 
again, nobody can determine when that barrier of entry becomes crossed, but at whatever point that it usually does get crossed is when it's a little bit too late. And so when you're in the midst of the shit bucket, again, you have to climb really, really hard and for a really long time to get out of it. But if you can nip it in the bud preemptively, like that's always going to win. So it's no different than, you know, if you, if your knee is giving you some issues or if you're having a nagging shoulder thing on it, it's like, hey, go see a chiropractor and go get some tissue work. Um, if it's not going away after a couple of weeks, go get an MRI. But instead, like it has to, you know, for me, I'll be super transparent when I had shoulder issues. Um, I my normal was like I couldn't fall asleep at night and I would wake up in agonizing pain because my shoulder hurt so bad and then my shoulder started to dislocate like that's when I was finally like oh well I'll go get you know an MRI yeah. um so that's just you know again people aren't encouraged and people aren't taught to kind of live on that preemptive side um and and again I'll say in the CrossFit space like people tend to be a little bit better like I've always gone to see a chiropractor you know I've always done all of that you know regular tissue work and maintenance but I had a really hard time pulling the trigger on you know, the MRI because I was in the, hey, I don't have insurance, um, money's a little tight, living paycheck to paycheck. Um, same thing. I know that a lot of the viewers are going to be in that same land where it's like, yeah, I just, uh, I got a family or I can barely afford a gym membership. It's like, no, I can't afford, you know, three or $400 on lab work. Um, so again, it's like, if you, if you see symptoms, know that it's not okay to be suffering. It's not okay to have these symptoms. And that you can, you know, live a happy and healthy lifestyle that's free of all of those. This is so helpful. I uh, I really hope that uh, there's going to be people listening who kind of strike a chord with what you're saying. And uh, maybe this can also spark some more dialogue and conversation with like questions that listeners might have and uh, really just other areas that you'd like to hear more about around this. Because I think we covered so many bases today. Um, but this is a continuing conversation. I think it, it, it shouldn't end and uh, we should keep having more dialogue around it. So thank you for that so far. I, uh, I just want to wrap up with a couple rapid fires. And uh, okay. yeah, so my first one for you is let's say that uh, everything that you've accomplished so far, right? And like, let's say all your clients, you had to start from scratch and uh, all you had was $500 and a laptop, what would you do with it to kind of, whether it's to get back to where you are now or maybe go a different route, but what comes to mind for you if that was like your only option? Oh man. So ironically, I feel like this is a super easy <laughs> question to answer. I don't even know if I need the $500. Um, so I guess we'll just say I would use like the $500 to like feed myself and maybe like buy a tent. So I, you know, I had living and, and, uh, you know, we tracked down, um, at Starbucks for some Wi-Fi. Um, but you know, I think the beautiful thing about present day is that, um, we have access to information everywhere. And so, um, several, several months ago, one of my best friends called me out and it was like, Hey, um, don't take this the wrong way, but you're really, really intelligent and you're really passionate about what you do. And it's cool that you share all these knowledge bombs. And, you know, he had heard me, you know, on client calls and was actually a client of mine in a former life too. Um, and so it was like, you have all this education that you're sitting on and useful information that could help people but you're only sharing it with your clients. And like, that's a little bit selfish. Like, why don't you get that information out there on social media? Um, and so earlier this year is actually when I basically began building the education platform via social media and specifically Instagram um, and just putting out, you know, information out there. And so that was actually um, when I built my nutrition coaching business, it was entirely online. Um, I actually don't like working with people that I know because um, there's that intimacy factor, right? Like you learn the dirtiest and, you know, most unsexy things about people. You know, you're asking questions about what is your digestion like? You know, what are your menstrual cycles like? Oh, hey, uh, sorry. I know we know each other in person, but like, can you tell me about your wiener? And you know, are you having a morning bonus? Like that's really hard hard to navigate. It's just never been one that I've been great at. And so even, you know, if I meet people in real life, I refer them out to friends or it's like, Hey, like I super appreciate that, you know, you, you want to reach out and you want to collaborate. Um, I, like I, I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't want to have that personal connection. I would rather have kind of this interpersonal connection because again, like 
I want to know all the little intimacies about a person so that we can help them you know, get to their best self. And so um, if I had $500 and if I had a laptop, um, I would actually do the same exact thing that I'm doing right now, which is just having an education platform via social media. Um, when you continually put out free content, you know, people see over time, oh, hey, like, you know what you're talking about. And you, you kind of build up those credentials that way, too. And so it's really great to say, you know, hey, I have XYZ certification or, hey, I have a degree in this. Um, but again, you know, if you're constantly putting out information for free without expectation, you actually can easily build clientele because people see, hey, she knows what she's talking about and she's worth listening to. Um, so yeah, I would be doing exactly what I'm doing, um, which is living and crushing life via Instagram, you know, just putting free information out there. And that's how I would rebuild my coaching platform. Love it. Uh, I, I, this one I have heard Steve Harvey talk about, and it really has stuck with me. And I, I love thinking about this myself and then also asking other people this question. But it's like, you know, relative to whatever your priorities are and how you kind of define success, I find that any person who has kind of reached that level where they're like, they feel like they've had some level of success relative to what they set out for and what they wanted, it's like you came to a point where, you you had to jump right you had to take a leap you didn't know what was going to happen um, I mean of course you're hoping for the parachute to open but as you actually take the leap it's like okay you're you're getting torn up by cliffs your clothes came off like all sorts of crazy shit happen before maybe that safe landing you know actually happens at the end and you know, the parachute opens up. Can you think of a time where, you know, you had to take a leap, you didn't know what was going to happen, it felt like your back was against the wall, and uh, yeah, how, how something along those lines, and, and how did you kind of navigate that? Oh, man. <laughs> so I feel like you're describing, like, my life memo, right? <laughs> um, there's been this running joke that I'm kind of like this Texas gypsy because um, I've been in Texas now for six years, but, like, I'm just that personality type that, like, if something seems like a good idea, um, I will absolutely, you know, it's like 30 seconds later, like, boom, let's do this, right? Um, and so when I initially graduated, because um, I graduated from Illinois State, you know, got my degree in nutrition and dietetics, um, I actually met... Um, my friend Chase when I was at regionals and so literally you know like we had a conversation we kind of you know we were we were joking around and stuff and then it was like oh hey I'm looking for a full-time coach in Dallas Texas um any chance you'd be interested like long shot right and so um I think literally I got back from regionals and within it was like a week and a half to two weeks like I packed all my stuff up in my car I um, had never been to Texas you know before I moved here um, and then, you know, we, we got into the coaching thing. And so um, same thing, you know, with seminar staff, a very similar story. It, you know, it was just kind of something that, you know, it was presented. You know, we went and jumped for it. Um, recently, you know, I was working for a very popular company, super heavily invested in the company, and then just kind of realized, you know, I had found my own true passions and kind of my own voice and things. And so same thing, it was like, okay, I have two options. You know, I tried my best to see if we could keep, you know, elevating each other and cruising on the same path, but realized like this was, you know, like people needed the information that I had to get out and people, you know, we had to bring that vision to fruitation. And so um, recently was actually when I decided to branch off on my own for nutrition, including rather um, than kind of working under an umbrella. So I would definitely say like that is my memo. Um, time and time again, is like I, the bigger and hairier the goal, um, you know, the, the more enticing it is to me. And I'll be the first person, you know, hey, I'll, I'll jump off the cliff, you know, just snag me, you know, grab my foot or something. Um, that is 100%, you know, me to a T. And I think you illustrated such a great point because people like to live in the safety net, um, but that's not where the good stuff happens. You know, that's not where the personal growth happens. Um, you have to put yourself out there and like the universe will always respond, right? Like the opportunities start flying left and right. The second you decide to just, you know, go be your best authentic you and crush life. I, yeah, I can totally resonate with that. It's like when you finally took the leap, 
certain things started coming your way that you had been hoping for before, but maybe just didn't because internally, or maybe like that intention wasn't fully, you know, you weren't fully committed. And then when you do take the leap, it's like, oh, left and right, all sorts of things are happening to kind of help support, you know, what you wanted. 100%. I mean, like, if you want to talk in the nutrition space, right, like, you'll have people where it's like, like, man, I'm miserable at my job. I hate what I'm doing. I love this nutrition thing. It's changed my life. I want to give this to other people. And the scary, you know, first piece of advice I give to people is like, just know that if you have the safety net of, you know, income and a salary, you're never going to be your best coach because You don't, you know, if you, if you quit your job, you know, five minutes from now, if you said, I am devoted to doing this nutrition coaching thing, you don't have any other choice. Like you have to put food on the table. You have to, you know, have a place to live. And so you're going to do everything in your power to make it happen. And so 100%, like you just, the safety net's not a good space to live. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like there's so much today that, uh, I want to go back and kind of listen and take notes on some of this stuff because you dropped a ton of knowledge bombs. And uh, (laughs) I know there's there's a ton of other areas that I want to get into that, uh, you know, I think deserve like its own episode at some point. So I would love to have you back on. Um, But thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, Where can we point people to to learn more about you and follow what you're up to? 100%. So um, Instagram is my main peanut butter and jelly. So my Instagram handle is Lori Christine King. Um, My website is actually the same. And so what I do, um, (laughs) Instagram wasn't really built to be an education platform as much as, you know, we try to manipulate it to be Um, 2,200 characters. is not very much. (laughs) Um, So what I basically try to do is, you know, I put content out there and then I take that same exact content I put it onto my website in a little bit longer format or, you know, on the chance that somebody says, hey, I'd love to see the case studies or, you know, more about this. um, I'll try to loop that into, you know, the website where you actually have space to, you know, link people out or or stuff like that. So, um, again, that Instagram handle was Lori Christine King. um, And then the website is actually the same exact thing. So just full name, Lori Christine King. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on. Uh, Is there anything that you'd like to leave listeners with? Oh, man. Um, I Absolutely. I would just say don't settle for symptoms, right? Um, you are your own best person and you know, you know how you're feeling. And so don't be afraid to get lab work done, but don't be afraid to get a second or third doctor opinion. You know, don't settle for feeling like garbage. You know, keep searching for answers if you don't feel, you know, if you don't feel your best. Don't be afraid to keep searching or to hire, you know, a qualified coach to help you problem solve through that because it is sometimes you're so close to the source that it's like you can't get out of your own way and see, oh, well, I I think that I sleep enough at night, but I really scam a lot of six or seven hour nights when I should be hitting, you know, eight to 10 or, oh, um, maybe I do go harder at the gym than I realize or I need more rest days. You know, there's so much value in having somebody, you know, as a support system to really give an outsider view to what's going on and, and, you know, check what's happening. Awesome. Well, Lori, thank you so much for coming on and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you lending me your ears. Before you head out, I wanted to share a free gift with you. It's only available for podcast listeners at MizHQ.com. Again, that's M-I-Z-H-Q.com. So go ahead and grab that. If you want to support the show, the best compliment that you can give is by leaving a review with your thoughts. You have no idea how much that helps, and I always love hearing from you guys. So once again, thank you again for tuning in. Until next time.